everyone. My name is Tiffany and this is my channel, Who's Your Handmade? Thank you for stopping by today. Today's video is all about my April 2023 sewing makes. Let's see what I made in the month of April. If that sounds interesting to you, stick around. If you are new to my channel, welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope that you will consider subscribing. If you have not done so already, I would love to welcome you into the sewing community. You can follow me on Instagram. I would love to follow you back and follow along with your sewing journey. My Instagram name is Hoosier.Handmade, and I really do love to follow other sewists and see what is going on in their sewing rooms. Thank you so much to all my subscribers, my my friends who are tuning in today. It really means so much to me that you keep showing up video after video and supporting me and I really do appreciate your friendship so much. Give this video a thumbs up and comment down below what have you accomplished in the month of April. April has probably been a great big sewing month for others, for most of us. Most of us have been participating in the hashtag self, selfless sew April 23 challenge where we are to sew for others in the month of April and let me just say that I took it to heart. <laughs> so I have a lot of things behind me that were made for others and I can't wait to share those with you. I like doing these makes videos so that I can get all my things that I made in that month together in one spot. We can talk about sizes and adjustments, fitting adjustments, and just have a one-stop shop where we can find everything that was made in the month of April. Before we get started, let me me just say I'm sorry that I'm wearing a cardigan it's it might be hot where you are <laughs> I know we're ready for summer I know we're ready for warm temperatures but Indiana has not got the memo yet <laughs> they cannot decide whether to go warm or cold so today is chilly I've pulled out my cardigan I did make this one this is simplicity 8811 it's a really fun cardigan pattern highly recommend it I think you can actually still find it in the pattern books it's so much fun to put together it was a really really fun make I've actually made two of them I gave one of them to my sister it's been like a year or so ago but a really great pattern and I have that on today because I'm just chilly so hopefully you'll excuse my cardigan here and like I do in all of my makes videos I want to start out by highlighting this little guy right here this is my sewing journal I purchased this from Amazon the link for this will be down below in the description box it's like $4.99 it's such a good deal I talk about it every single makes video it is so much fun to catalog your makes in something like this really easy to open it up see what size you made or what adjustments you made or what seam allowance <laughs> I use it a lot for seam allowances especially if I'm making that project again and I don't want to pull up my instructions <laughs> so I just cheat a little bit and I look in my book so go get you one of these if you have not done so already super great buy and you're not gonna regret recording all of your makes. So I have made nine things in the month of April and let's just run through those real quick here. I was sewing for others for most of the month. There are two garments in there for myself and we'll get to those but for the most part I sewed for others. It was so much fun to focus in on not only Addie, my two-year-old. I sew for her a lot but this month I really focused in on my hubby. Josh was put in some requests. <laughs> he has asked me to try a few things and I was really really happy to kind of set aside projects for myself and focus in on him. So let's get to Addie's things and then we will look at what I made for Josh and then lastly for myself. So the first thing that I made in the month of April was Addie June's Easter dress. Easter feels like it was about 10 years ago. <laughs> So I guess the month of April is a long one, but I did indeed make this in the month of April. This is the Little Lizard King Lund dress. It is a super cute dress. It has a simple skirt underneath, and then you put this overlay on top, and I did um, cotton fabric. The floral is cotton, and then the gingham is kind of like a canvas fabric. It's a very soft canvas fabric that I bought from Hobby Lobby. So I did a cute ruffle here, ruffle detail, and then on the back are beautiful little buttons. 
and the cute sash bow. So she was just super darling in this. I'll pop some pictures up as I'm talking. I made a size 3 for Addie, 3T, no adjustments. It fit her really, really well. The length was really good. She looked super cute. To go along with her Easter outfit, I made her a darling little bonnet. This is the Little Lizard King Auburn bonnet. It is super, super cute. I made her an extra large size, which is the biggest size it comes in. So for next year, I'm going to have to get another pattern, uh, but this one was super, super cute. I loved the details. My stripes even kind of lined up there accidentally. <laughs> Happy accident. So it was a really fun project. It's completely lined there with the same fabric that I used for her dress. So that was Addie's Easter outfit. The next garment that I made for Addie was an Easter egg hunting dress. I wanted to make her something festive to hunt those Easter eggs in. So this this is the free peekaboo patterns decoded dolman dress talked about it a lot on my channel i'm super impressed with this pattern i really love it and it is free if you join their facebook group and get their code or if you get their newsletter and get their code uh, this is completely free to you so well worth joining their group or signing up for their newsletters it is a super fun pattern it is a knit little dress that features a neckband and i did the optional ruffle on and the sleeves didn't even hem them just use Hobby Lobby rib knit and it was super super cute my good friend Kathy gifted this fabric to me it's just beautiful and it really just spoke to me and said I think she needs to hunt Easter eggs in that dress <laughs> so that is what I made her super cute I made the size 2t and then 4t in length because my daughter is growing like a weed <laughs> and she's super tall so I graded out to the longer size but it's a really cute dress so do check this free pattern out if you haven't done so already the last thing that I made for Addie June was this cute little PJ set my kid needs more PJs she's growing out of them she loves these kinds of PJs so I decided to just stick with this one these are what she loves she loves the cuffs <laughs> She loves the sleeves. She loves how these fit and they're super, super soft. So I'm just going to fill her drawers with these kinds of PJs because I love making them. This is the Ellie and Mac free pattern. It is called the Grow With Me PJs. Do check it out if you have any littles in your life that love wearing PJs like this. They feature knit. They're all knit. They have cuffs at the bottom, at the wrist. It has a knit neckband. The pants are super cute. They just have an elastic little waistband there. You sew it on and then you flip it down and sew it again. So super easy to do. Very, very simple. Love making this. This is some knit fabric that I purchased from Hobby Lobby, this floral teal. Again, this is Hobby Lobby uh, rib knit. I love using that for cuffs and neckbands. And then this panel is from Highland Fabric. They have an online shop and I love her stuff. I purchased some panels from her in her Christmas sale and I finally pulled this little kitty cat out to use it for Addie's PJs and I think they're super cute. I made her a size 2T. I've been making it the whole time. They fit really, really well because they really do grow with your child. They're actually made to last for a long time. So the shirt is kind of long for her size. So we just tuck it into our little pants. And then you have these extra long cuffs at the bottom so, so that the length lasts for a long time when your little kiddo is growing, growing. So I love this pattern. I will never stop making it. I think it is so much fun. Okay, so that is what I've made for Addie June in the month of April. So let's move to Josh. I had some aspirations for what I wanted to make him and I achieved almost three out of four. <laughs> the third project is not quite done. I'm going to show it to you. It's pretty much done. It just needs a few final touches and then one project I didn't quite get to but that's okay. Three out of four is not bad. So the first one that I want to show you is this t-shirt that I made for him. This is the Ellie and Mac straight fit basic tee. It is a really fun easy uh, t-shirt pattern. Great for men who love those easy wearing kind of t-shirts. My husband loves like Carhartt t-shirts um, with a pocket needs to have a pocket and I found some fabric at Joann's that kind of mimicked uh, the feel of his Carhartt t-shirts and he loves this t-shirt he was so impressed with it 
and I will definitely be making more for him. So I did uh, find my own pocket piece. This shirt does not come with a pocket piece in the pattern. I just googled uh, free pockets for shirts and this one popped up and I sewed it on there, made it kind of the design I wanted it to make. Up on the pocket area, I tried to mimic his ready to wear shirts like his Carhartt t-shirts that he loves. So I tried to make it as close looking to ready to wear as I could so that he would wear it. <laughs> <laughs> and love it as much as I do. So this was a great pattern. So I did do a few adjustments on this one. I made him the size 5XL and then I graded to a 6 on the side seams. So I wanted to give him a little more room in the belly region and that worked out really really well. It fits him really good. So I am really pleased with this t-shirt. The next make for Josh <laughs> is my greatest triumph of the month. I think I, I'm just... I'm so proud of this. I was frustrated with it. I struggled with it. It's not perfect, but I am really, really proud of how it turned out. So this is Josh's button up shirt that I wanted to make him. It is McCall's 2447. This is an older pattern. It's from 1999. I had it in my stash. I think during one of the McCall sales, I was digging through the drawers at Joann's <laughs> and I found this one. So it has all of these views, you guys. This pattern comes with all of this. It comes with a ton of options. I made view B down there at the bottom. I chose this pattern because it had a lot of the features that I wanted. I wanted a back yoke. I wanted this box plate in the back. I wanted um, a pocket in the front, and yet I, I kind of redrew the pocket in the end to make it look like how I wanted it to be. And I just, I really loved the look of this shirt. Also, it had the biggest finished garment measurements of 63 and a half at the bust line that I had found in any big four pattern. So that was impressive to me. It, it made me feel like I had wiggle room for sizing. And this shirt turned out really, really nice. The only cautionary uh, thing that I would say is to watch out for the collar on this pattern. I... I, had, I struggled with it. It did not fit. The collar piece was not fitting to the shirt correctly how it should. I ended up getting it. There are imperfections. There are problems, but I'm not going to point them out. And you can't see them when Josh is wearing the shirt. His broad shoulders really make everything lay really nicely. <laughs> so I'm really, really pleased with how this turned out. I did bias cut or cut kind of sideways the pocket. And then the back yoke, I really like the look of it. I did it so that I would have an easier time in pattern matching, but I actually really like the look, the effect of it. This is a lined back yoke. I don't know if you can kind of see there. They did not use the burrito method for that back yoke, but the method that they used in this pattern was fine. I just followed the instructions and I did just fine. So I used some really pretty brown buttons in the front that I had from my stash. I did do some adjustments to the bottom of the shirt. It was supposed to have scoops on both sides and I figured that my husband would like something that was just straight across. So I just drew my lines to make it straight across when I was cutting out my pattern and it really just turned out so well. He is so impressed with it. He actually said that he can't wait to wear it to work and to show off what his wife has made him. So could you put any bigger smile on my face? It just makes me so happy that he is pleased with it. And then one more project for Josh is in the mix, but it's not quite done yet. I had to wait on him to return home from travel so that I could try the elastic in his gym shorts. I am making him the Be Active gym shorts from Ellie and Mac. Josh loves wearing gym shorts, basketball shorts, whatever you call them, around the house as his lounge clothes. And so I thought I would try some for him. This fabric is from Joann's. It's performance knit fabric, and it really behaved pretty good. It's a little slinky. It wants to shift on you a little bit, but it actually did. It did fine. I sewed this up on my regular sewing machine with my walking foot and it really did fine. So it has a feature on the legs there. Uh, color block feature which kind of looks professional. I really like the look of that and I just need to finish the waistband. 
there are a few fitting adjustments that I need to make for this pattern for Josh. Um, to get his waist measurement where I wanted it to be, I made him the biggest size, the 5XL, but that made the legs of uh, the pants way too big for him. He's he, he just doesn't need that much space in the leg area. So I need to get a little creative and try to do some grading on these shorts for him in the future. Hopefully though he will like this pair for around the house and will use it um, for now and then I can make some adjustments to a future pair. So that was all my April sewing for others so now let's see what I was able to sew for myself. I did sneak in a couple things for myself. Uh, right now as you're watching this video I am in California. I am in a conference. I have a week-long conference. My hubby and my daughter went with me but I needed some professional wear clothing. I wanted to make one more L and Mac elevated blazer and I did indeed make that for my uh, meetings. This is such a gorgeous blazer. This pattern is amazing. It has great instructions. It walks you through every single step that you need to take and this thing just turned out so beautiful. This fabric was purchased from fabric.com back when it was a thing. It is a Liverpool knit perfect for a more structured knit garment like a blazer turned out really really beautiful it has a really pretty uh, collar you top stitch it to make it look professional and then in the back you do fisheye darts here on each side and that gives you some really pretty shaping so I really really loved this blazer it looks really wonderful and I can't wait to wear it <laughs> I'm actually probably wearing it as you watch this uh, on that day of conferences so this was an exciting make as well. I made the size 2XL in this uh, blazer as I usually do for most LA Mac patterns and then I use the 3XL sleeves. They do work but you gotta do a little bit of finagling to get them in there because you put the sleeves in in the round on this pattern as opposed to flat like you do most LA Mac patterns but it turned out fine you just have to do a little bit of uh, wiggling to get it in there and it really does look it looks really nice. And then the last project for myself is something of a fail. This is the Love Notion Sybil skirt. I have made the A-line version, size 3XL, but alas, <laughs> I did not cut it out with the stretch going the right way. So I bought this beautiful gabardine knit fabric from Joann's here recently. I bought it to match to match my blazer, I wanted to make something of a set for me to wear to my conference meetings. And it would have turned out great if I had not been distracted and not watching uh, the way of the stretch on this gabardine fabric more closely. It was going the opposite of what usually my fabric goes. So always test your fabric, see which way the stretch is going before you cut. So I didn't have any more of this fabric and it just is what it is. So it does not stretch the right way. So if there's no stretch, like across ways across your hips, there is stretch going up and down. <laughs> Which I, t I don't need it going up and down necessarily. So the body of the skirt is just too tight. I did cut the waistband out in the right direction. So the waistband is on there correctly and it does stretch, uh, but I did not do the skirt. So I can get this on it does fit to get it on, but to actually walk and work and, you know, actually live in it, it's not comfortable enough. So maybe one day I will fit into this. Um, I went ahead and finished it. It is a beautiful fabric, like I said, so maybe one day. And that is all. That is the nine things that I made in the month of April, most of it for others. It was so much fun to focus in on others in the month of April. So let me know what you've been working on in the month of April. I would love to chat with you down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching today. Thank you for being my friend and I will see you guys in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.